On behalf of the Europe of Nations and Freedoms Group, Mr. De Graaf. Mr. President, I send my congratulations to Ms. Theresa May, to the United Kingdom and the British people. And I say to them, you have regained your freedom and your sovereignty by invoking Article 50 by leaving the European Union. You have now regained the opportunity to flourish as a nation, to control your borders, to make your own laws, to make your own trade deals. The bureaucrats from the EU will try to make you pay about 60 billion. They'll try to force you to comply with all EU directives and standards and to accept hundreds of thousands of migrants, to accept even the rulings of the, Euro the European Court of Justice. They will try to open an Ireland road for migrants to the UK. I say to you, don't give in to these demands. You're far better off outside the EU, a union which is going the way of more and more isolation. And they are calling you friend here, friend. But they want to punish you and make you bleed. Let me therefore remind you of the famous words of Sir Winston Churchill. We shall defend our island, whatever the costs may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. God bless the United Kingdom. The floor goes to Mr. Wolf on behalf of the non-attached members. Thank you, Mr. President. As Brexit negotiations begin, it is a joy to watch the towering masters in the art of EU diplomacy in full flow here today. Those like Mr. Weber, whose bellicose, threatening and theatrical words no doubt entertain this chamber, but are like a pen with no point in the negotiating rooms. He said on his recent tour of the British media that politicians who fought for Brexit were allowed to grow up in a free Europe and that the UK should now pay more. Well, Mr. Weber, may I remind you that the freedom that you say you promote came at a mighty cost to Britain. It came in the blood and sacrifice of millions of Britons, those who, like my grandfather, when asked unhesitatingly fought in the sands of Africa so Europe can be free. It came in the 120 billion it cost Britain to fight a German dictator. It came in the 5 trillion Britain contributed to NATO to help build a shield of freedom around Europe from communism. It came on the 500 billion or more we have contributed to the EU and the billions more we spend each day more than we receive. Mr. Weber, on Radio 4 you asked, Mrs. May, please tell me what leaving the EU means. Well, I will tell you. It means we are leaving a European Union that has forgotten the costs and sacrifices Britons freely gave to ensure you are free to ex exercise your diplomacy of the defeated in this chamber of the forgetful. Thank you. Mr. Annemans, one minute. Ladies and gentlemen, a call to the EU majority in this European Parliament. Please stop this emotional, almost hysterical performance which is designed to understate your superiority. We in the European Parliament shouldn't pretend that we have a veto. The only people who can decide in this whole debate are the populations of the UK and the European Union. And I would say there are lots of sympathisers elsewhere in the UK for what Britain has decided to do. Everything else is purely technical negotiations and that's what we should stick to rather than all sorts of expressions of desire to commit revenge uh, or to couple free trade with free movement and so on. If there's one thing we can do, it's to express our political desire to treat the United Kingdom without Rancun and to treat it as a good partner and an important friend.